I, I, if, if, I'll tell, I would do it once just for him, only once, and I would want to have, like, the most, the most effective, uh, life jacket ever. I would want the most effective life jacket ever. And then, we'll probably never do it ever again. Um, I, I remember, I think I mentioned this maybe at a, at a previous video, that one of our company trips, our, the engineering team, because I'm an engineer in real life, um, the engineering offsite, we went whitewater rafting. And it was totally optional. You didn't have to do it if you didn't want to. I really didn't want to. But one of my closest friends on the engineering team, like, encouraged me deeply and reassured me. She said, I will make it a point to make sure that our guide is the most, like, is the, is the best guide in that specific organization, that specific company. Um, she's gonna say, like, just the one that has the best record of not tipping over. She says, that's the one that we're gonna put you in. And I said, okay, fine. I will go on two conditions. You give me that guide. Um, and that both you and this other guy, this other guy who is, is more of the, um, the other guy who I know could and would save me if I, if I landed the water, I said, I want him on our, <laughs> in our boat too. If that happens, then I'll do it. And so I did, I did the white water rafting. Um, did I have fun doing it? No. I didn't have fun doing it. Was I glad that I did it? Glad is not the right word. Um, I think the best thing I could say is I am glad that I can say that I have done it so that I never have to do it again. Okay? So I didn't do it. So that basically it was not... I did it not for my own benefit, because I really didn't have a benefit from it. I did it for the benefit of, my, of everyone else. Because um, I feel like they probably got a kick out of seeing me, you know, facing my deepest fear. And now that I faced my one of my one of my biggest fears, I have zero desire or interest in facing it again. Zero. Zero. Does that mean I overcame it? I don't know if that means I overcame it or not. I did it once, never doing it again. And I knew, I knew that when, that I would never do it again after I went doing it. And, you know, it, you could argue that maybe I went in, like, as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and that's why I didn't, like, quote-unquote, enjoy it or have fun. But, you know, it's just... That's just me. Me and deep water don't mix. Not, not my cup of tea. Not my go-to. Has nothing to do with you, Cove. You go and do. You do you. Do it. Knock yourself out. Um, his voice was soft and earnest. You could tell how much the request meant to him. You also knew him enough to know that he wasn't going to give up on this idea. Letting him go on his own wasn't an option. Really? You're an adult. You, why don't you go ask another one of your friends to do this? We can do so many other things. There's so many other things in this world you and I have been doing, could be doing, and you want me to do this? Seriously? I can't have you running off by yourself. I'll go without any hospital trips. Now, to be fair, if I was being 100% fair, my anxiety and phobia of going out into deep water, to be fair, probably matches his anxiety and phobia of going to a dance. So I will admit, I will admit that he did that for me because it was really important to me. So if he wanted me to do this for him because it was important for him, but I'm still going to resist it the entire time. <laughs> I actually love jet skiing. Heck no. I'd be interested in trying jet skiing. Uh, I'm just gonna say, I'll keep an eye for him. I just want to see how he'll respond when I say this. I know that I'm being very, like, difficult, but for once, 
For once, I want to be difficult in one of these moments. I don't get to be difficult normally. Normally I'm pretty like, you know, oh, you know, very supportive of, of Cove and everything he wants to do, just as a change of pace. And just because I think it'll be interesting and it'll add a little bit of spice to our relationship, I'm just gonna be like, I'm gonna resist this for as long as I can until the game forces me to do it. I'll keep an eye on you from the shore. Cove perked up at once, a grin stretched wide across his face. He was practically bouncing in place. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, okay, okay. So it's fine. He says he didn't want to do it without me, meant that I could still be present on the sand, and that'll still count as me doing it with him. Good. You got up and worked up worked you got up and worked as a team to gather everything needed for the trip. Cove's other aquatic hobbies came in handy, and he was quickly kitted out with everything he'd need other than the jet skis themselves. You need to run back home briefly, having dressed and prepared for a day that didn't involve jet skiing, and it won't involve jet skiing because I ain't going into that jet ski. But soon enough, you're both ready and jumping into Cove's car. As you got in, you learned that Cove had used the debrief time apart to locate a rental store on his phone. You caught his eye as you clicked your seatbelts into place. Excited, you held out a hand. Cove slapped it in a high five before setting off. Like, Realistically, if Cove convinced me to go jet skiing with him, I would do it, like I said, but I don't think he would enjoy it having me with him. I don't think he would actually enjoy having me with him versus if he just went on his own. And here's why. Because I would be so panicked and so stressed out because that's how I was during the... During the um, the wet water rafting like I tried really hard it, it's not like I didn't like I tried really hard to just relax and I tried to like ease the tension and I tried to like channel my, my um, co-worker that I was talking about that convinced me to go encouraged me to go she was like during one of our roasts because we have um we have roasts whenever people get promoted and I had was I had just been promoted and so she gave a roast to me about how when we were um, we were whitewater rafting, I kept saying over and over again, this is my coping mechanism, I kept saying, I am Moana, I am Moana, I am Moana, I am Moana, just to get my sanity like in check while we were going through this horrific experience for me. So basically I would just be a total wreck and I would just, I would probably be like stressing Cove out. It might be amusing to him at first and he might find it adorable and cute at first, but I'm telling you probably after the first five minutes, it would probably get old really quick and he'd probably be really annoyed with me and he probably would regret bringing me with him physically onto the jet ski. So I'm doing him a favor. <laughs> I'm doing him a favor of watching from afar. Trust me, Cove, when I say you will have way more fun and you will enjoy it way more if I'm not on that jet ski with you. Trust me. So, you caught his eye as you clicked your seatbelts into place. Excited, you held out a hand. Cove slapped it in a high five for uh, setting off. You and Cove soon arrived. The ocean was perfectly inviting today. The deep blue of the water glittered under the clear sky while the tide rolled in and out at its leisure. I mean, look at the, wow, look at that wetsuit, man. I have to admit, Cove does look really good on that wetsuit, which is why it'll be fine for me to watch him from afar. I'm so excited for this. You are just as pumped as he was. His excitement was adorable. You felt a little worried. You felt a, you felt a chill of fear. You were really doing this. You didn't know how to feel. His excitement was adorable, but I'm not going. Seeing how pleased you were, Co grinned at you. Hey. Oh, hey. Want to say hi to my dad while we're here? I've already texted my mom about the plan. He's working right now. You remembered how close this shop was. It wouldn't take long even by walking. Sure, we can do that. Mr. Holden was a great guy, so you were happy to check in on him. Sorry. Thanks. Sorry might be kind of awkward when he hears why we're here, but it should be all right. I mean, my parents forgave me a long time ago for that amazing stunt. I don't want to be scared off jet skiing for my whole life because of it. You wondered which of you Cove was attempting to reassure. It was only a short walk back down the dock to Mr. Holden's scuba shop. Cove breathed, breathed in, as familiar with the store as he was with his own home. 
The place was quiet, empty aside from a couple of customers quietly browsing and Cove's dad behind the town. Quietly browsing and Cove's dad behind the counter. Mr. Holden looked up, his friendly expression spreading into a grin when he saw who had just entered. Hey! Hi, Vaughn. Hey, sport. What brings you all the way out here? He cast an eye at the way the two of you were dressed. Judging by how you're decked out, I'm guessing... scuba diving? There's plenty here for that. What can I help you with? Cove chuckled, amused by how quickly his dad seized on a favorite topic, or maybe it was how his dad always felt over himself trying to be useful. Hi, da hi Dad. Um, we're not doing that this time. We sort of decided to go rent a couple of jet skis. The phrase jet skis had set Mr. Holden's mouth in a taut line immediately. Jet skis. He echoed the words as his eyes instinctively darted to the scar on Cove's arms. That's... That's how... That's when... Mr. Holden started to speak several times, each attempt quickly abandoned. Cove smiled encouragingly, trying not to add to his father's worries. Don't worry about it. I promise I'll be careful, and Vaughn will be there too, watching. We always look out for each other. From afar, this time. Mr. Holden pinched his face back into an unconvincing smile. Right. All right, you're a whole lot bigger now that you're back. Heck, you can drive a car and everything. And it's not like, see the thing is, that's the other thing. I feel like with me being so like nervous and panic stricken, me being there physically on the jet ski with him would probably put him in more danger, honestly. You know, it would probably put him at a far greater risk than me not being there with him. So this is all logically sound why I'm not there physically on his jet ski. All right, you're a whole lot bigger now than you were back then. Heck, you can drive a car and everything. I'm sure you and Vaughn will have plenty of fun. He... Cove definitely will. The worry still echoed out in his voice, barely concealed by the positive words, but Cove was buoyed by his father's support. Yeah, well, we're all set. We only stopped by to say hi and let you know since we're over here. That's very nice of him and very mature of him. Mr. Holden beamed, obviously moved by his son's simple consideration. Wow, you're so thoughtful. Thanks for taking the time. Co gave his dad a crooked smile, shaking his head bashfully. He'd long stopped fighting his dad's loose, effusive praise, but that didn't mean he'd ever become good at accepting it. Mr. Holden simply laughed at his son's response. It'd be great if you could keep me in the loop while you're out there, too. Just text me to let me know if it's going well, or, or anything. I will. His dad smiled more easily. Hey. Great. Cove rubbed his arm at his arm, causing Mr. Holden's eyes to momentarily twitch back to the childhood injury. Bye. We're gonna head out. See you later. Take care. See you, Mr. Holden. Mr. Holden waved you off as you left the store. The pair of you headed back to the docks, walking side by side. After your feet hit the roads, Cove's pace fell. Fell. Glancing over, you saw him looking down, out over the water. That wouldn't have been unusual if his expression had been so somber. He wasn't geared up with anticipation or even nervousness, but with an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic lethargy. Something was weighing heavy on his mind. Oh, uh, maybe he's having, like, anxiety, second thoughts. Cove, what's up? You're gonna walk right off into the sea if you don't pay attention. You nudged him gently. Um... What's up? Huh? He blinked, startled by your, you interrupting his rumination. Sorry. Oh, sorry. He sighed, though you torn his attention from from the ocean and gradually drifted back to the water. You cleared your throat, unwilling to lose him again. Sorry again. He put his hands to his face, rubbing his eyes wearily. Here I go, thinking everything's resolved with what's happened and we can have fun, but I can't just enjoy anything. I had to find something else to get stuck in my head. You're having second thoughts about jet ski? No. No, that's not it. The ends of his lips were drawn to the beginning of a frown, like gray clouds clustering to signal a coming storm. I figured my dad would be a little worried about me doing it, but what he was saying, it wasn't what I'd expected. He was so sad, it was more than nervous. I think he feels bad, and now I feel bad, but it isn't as if I'm the only one who ever does something stupid or gets hurt. It got me thinking about that whole time. That's when I realized it wasn't long after that incident that my parents separated. Are you thinking are you thinking that's what caused them to separate? Or that was the straw that broke the camel's back? You stayed quiet. Um hadn't you noticed that before? Well I kind of did, but not exactly in the way I'm seeing it now. As a kid I didn't think about the consequences of my actions, you know. 
or how what I did impacted other people. Like, why should anyone care? I'm the one doing it, not them. Yeah, but I can see that. I can see that in and of itself alone probably wasn't the thing that caused them to get divorced. Maybe it was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Maybe it was more like, you know, you were, watch, you were supposed to be the responsible parent and, you know, under your watch, our son got into a accident that could have been much, much, much worse. Um, and maybe that's why they ended up getting into a fight or argument or whatever and decided to separate. But then that doesn't really make much sense because she was totally cool with Cove continuing to be under his care like over the summer separately from her. So if she if that was the reason why they had initiated that sparked the separation, then I don't see Cove necessarily being with the father solely immediately after. I don't know. I'm not sure what. I don't know. It made no sense and I still cared when other people did things I didn't like, but I was eight and mostly just mad that nothing felt like it was in my control. You could tell that he was building up to something, so you nodded for him to continue. I was pretty difficult to deal with because of that attitude, but looking back, I think that was what saved me from something a lot of kids go through. Blaming themselves for their parents' divorce. It never crossed my mind that anything I did made a difference on my mom and dad's relationship. They would do what they did no matter what. Now though, I guess it's kind of hard to ignore that thought, huh? I mean... Their situation was already so hard, and I wasn't a good kid, so... He left his words adrift as he looked down. The conclusion unfinished. It was silent between you. Yeah, that's... I can understand that. Being a parent myself... Here's the thing. Being a parent myself... I think most parents would be lying if they said that their children never, even indirectly, directly or indirectly, caused there to be a tension, caused there to be tension with their spouse. Because my, my kids are only two years old and not even a month old now. And there have been moments when something there have been moments about our kids that has certainly, even my daughter, who's not even a month yet, has caused a bit of sparks of disagreement and arguments between me and my husband. So, um, mostly to do with like how to parent or what is considered safe and not safe, what is considered um, nagging, what is considered a big thing versus a small thing, like. I tend to, he, he feels like I tend to nag on the small things, but to me, there are bigger than small. Maybe not huge, but they're still bigger than small. So things like that. Um, but I don't think that something that my kids will do would cause us to get into an argument that would make us want to separate. I feel like things that make you things that makes parents separate typically are between them it has nothing to do with the kids like the kids may exacerbate it a bit because kids <laughs> taking care of kids can be very stressful it's very stressful like taking care of kids and then when you're adding that to something that it only compounds it can just compound the issues that are between two spouses. But the thing is, those issues were already there to begin with and had nothing to do with the kids. It was just the kids kind of brought it more to light when it normally wouldn't be brought to light. Um, so I don't... Yeah, it's a terrible feeling, feeling like you as a child caused your parents' divorce. And I like to believe that that virtually is not a thing like I can't uh, I can't say completely that there has not been cases where where a it was I can't say that there was not a case where it was um, technically the kids fault that the parents divorced I think that's a very extreme case but more, way more often than not, it's it's got nothing to do with the child. It has nothing to do with children. It's all really just about whatever issues the two parents have. So, 
but only for a second, Ko pulled himself up to his full height, his chin held aloft. Whatever he decided, he was resolute. I'm going back. I've got to talk to my dad. I'm not going to let things be like before, where I just feel terrible and refuse to even tell him what's going on. That doesn't work for either of us. He's so mature. Why? You can go ahead if you want. I won't mind. I still really want to do this, and I'm sure it'll be okay. Why am I going ahead? The only reason I came was to watch you jet ski. What am I going to do? I don't like the water cove. I'm sorry. That's the biggest difference you and I have. That's how you and I are diametrically opposed. That's one aspect of our relationship that is so diametrically opposed. You love the water, and I can't stand it. All right, I'll see you later. You nodded, you could. I want to stay with you. There's no way you're going off on your own. Yeah, I want to stay with you because, because I'm not gonna, what am I gonna do? We always look out for each other, remember? Cove smiled gently, having wanted that deep down. Thanks, let's go. You and Cove retook your steps down the docks once more, heading back to Mr. Holden's scuba shop. The customers you'd spotted in there before were now leaving the store, new bags clutched in their hands. You hoped that this would mean Cove could have his conversation without a public audience. This time, Cove strode inside the shop with purpose. Mr. Holden, still at the counter, glanced up to greet whoever came had come inside. He grinned as you approached. How's it going? Hello again. Forgot something? Sort of. Cove had reached the counter now. You needed to rush things just to keep up with him as he crossed the show floor. Mr. Holden raised an eyebrow, taking in Cove's shift in attitude, and chose his next words with care. Is everything all right? Cove swallowed, not answering initially. Talking openly with his dad was still somewhat new for the son, and you knew that he was struggling for the right way to begin. I wanted to ask about what happened. Mr. Holden winced as if the words had struck him physically. The accident? No, the divorce. The pain expression, the pain expression fell from Mr. Holden's face. Wide-eyed, his jaw slack. He, he gaped at Cove. I am actually curious huh? about it. None of my business, but I'm curious about it. Why? Cove glanced over his shoulder at you. As your eyes met, you saw him draw confidence by having you by his side. He turned back to his father. I want to know the truth. His tone was grave. Did me getting into the accident hurt your marriage? If I hadn't done it, would you and mom have gotten along better? No, heck no. Mr. Holden quashed the quest suggestion of the gravity you'd rarely heard in his voice. You were eight years old. You were not responsible in any way. Kyra and I should have protected you. <sighs> I can understand why you're feeling that. What happened it was so horrible. How could it not have an impact? It did. It was a reflection of us as parents. The relationship between just your mom and me was separate and already unsalvageable. Cove turned away, his brow still furrowed as he looked at the floor. I, well, Maybe I'm being anxious and it's taking over, but it just wasn't then. It wasn't just then. I always cause problems. He plowed on and willing to give up without explaining his worries. What if I'd been be easier to raise, or if, if I had if you'd had me later on, or maybe even if you didn't have me at all, it might have been better for the two of you. Well, the thing is, like, if he was such a problem child, like he says, then if anything, the parents would have divorced you, not each other. <laughs> if that really was the case, if you're thinking, oh, I was such a demon, I was such a terrible child. Then they wouldn't be they wouldn't be divorcing each other. They would be divorcing away from you. So yeah, that's another reason why why it I understand why kids, especially that age, why young kids wonder if a divorce is their fault. Um, but normally, when parents get divorced, they still want to have custody of their kids. Normally, they want to have custody of their kids. So it's not that, but yeah. Um, if I didn't have you, then what good would my life be? Mr. Holden didn't let the words hang unchallenged in the air for even a second. He hurried over to Cove, taking his son's arms in his hands. Cove, listen, there's only one person to blame for things not working, and that's me. I don't know, Mr. Holden, it takes two. I mean, I, think, I still think it takes two. Cove opened his mouth to speak, but Mr. Holden forced on, determined to erase any question in Cove's mind. I'm not saying this is to, this to dishonestly push accountability off from someone else or throw a pity party for myself. You want to know the truth? So that's what I'm giving you. Your father is the reason your family couldn't stay together. You think you think you caused trouble? You should have seen me at your age. You're such a good kid. I can hardly believe how good you are. 
Mr. Holden's eyes were misty as he squeezed his son's arms. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, you need to blame yourself for. I'm sorry, Cove, to you and to Kyra. Mom? Yeah, your mom. His pained face eased slightly into the bittersweet smile. Mm. Kyra. She was just so smart and driven and completely bursting with life. It was as if she could do anything. You know, there wasn't a single solitary person who didn't want, want even a piece of her attention just to catch her eye for a moment. But for some crazy reason, she had a soft spot for my 17-year-old screw-up self. That's when we first met, though it definitely took some time before I managed to ask her out on a date. Mr. Holden shook his head, his smile melting as his recollection became solemn once more. And then we'd only been officially together for about six months when we found out we were having a baby. I was so worried, so scared, but she was so brave. She was my rock, but we both knew the road ahead was going to be rockier. When we got married, I didn't see it as a dream come true. I wasn't about to start living my life in the only way I could imagine doing so. I thought what happened, happened, and throwing my cards in with a girl like her was worth the risk. He grimaced, the scented sour in his mouth, regretting his past perspective. I had been taking care of myself on my own, and getting by, then all of a sudden I was going to have a wife and a child. That's... So I thought, and a, and a baby. <laughs> And a baby on the way. Yes, yes. So I thought, all right, I better step things up and take care of all of us. And that's what I did. Sort of. He rolled his eyes. I made money, kept the roof over our heads, and put food on the table. But I was always busy, focused on taking care of things that I didn't stop to consider that what anyone else was thinking or what they actually needed. I made every decision about what I did, and as a result, what happened to the family, by myself, never asking what your mom felt or even wondering if she might have an opinion. I'd tell Kyra about the great place I'd found and how we'd be moving there in the same breath. Or that I'd spent all our savings and taken out a loan to start this business we're standing in and even more nonsense. Anything I felt I needed to do, I did. Kyra couldn't even ask where I'd been all day without me rolling my eyes like she was being a nag. See that? That's the thing! Like, I feel... That's a, that's the biggest thing between me and Colin is I I try I feel he feels like I nag him I feel like I don't nag him and I pick my battles I choose my battles of what to bring up and I only filter out and and nag I guess about the really important things so I was making sure we didn't starve obviously right could she trust me. He sighed, his head hung low. <sighs> she went to school part-time while raising you, really knuckling down, but that didn't matter to me back then. She could have spent her days lying in bed, not dying, and I would have felt the same. I didn't care. I was going to get it all done on my own either way. It was so stupid. I admired her more than anyone when, I, when there was something at stake. Yet as soon as responsibilities were involved, I couldn't let myself rely on her. He combed a hand through his hair, searching for an understanding of his own younger self. I'm not even sure why. Maybe I had something to prove. Maybe I'm the one who didn't understand her. Maybe I'm the one who didn't trust her in the end. I mean, I I don't disagree with you, Mr. Holden. <laughs> not everything that you're saying makes a lot of sense. Poor Kyra. She had to spend every day mentally weighing the pros and cons of putting up with my horrible ideas for the sake of peace or trying to explain to my blockheaded self what I was doing wrong. It must have been so stressful and frustrating. Constantly having to let everything go because I was stubborn and absolutely would make a fight out of it. He snorted bitterly. <laughs> it was definitely I was definitely stuck in my head and let a, lo a lot those days. Our relationship at that point was made of arguments and cool tolerance, but I still genuinely didn't see the divorce coming. We made it through the first few years, and after that, I never really considered it ending. It was just how life was. In retrospect, it's clear Kyra kept thinking on it even more, more every year especially because she managed to finish her journalism degree, and with us being more s stable. Financially, that is. She thought of everything. She even timed it right when your school ended for the year, so the process would hopefully be all settled before you had to worry about class again. We were already talking about it before the accident ever happened. I know it took it, I know I took it really hard, being a sad sack and all, all around the neighborhood, but even that is unfair of me. When it shook out, I'm the one who got everything. Kyra didn't want to leave you, Cody. She never would have. I'm certain she felt like she had no choice but to end the relationship. The business was doing really well by then, so I had an easier time making a living. 
She was between jobs, and when she did get a new job, it meant that she'd be traveling all the time. 